To what extent the average German supported the National Socialist German Workers' Party following the rise to power of Adolf Hitler and the rest of the Nazi leadership is a question that, to a degree, has never fully been answered. Related to that question is how fully Germans bought into the various aspects of Nazi propaganda and how many of them viewed the regime as legitimate. Furthermore, what terms should we use to characterize the Third Reich? Is totalitarian enough of a descriptive term? These are some of the questions that Richard Evans deals with in The Third Reich in Power, a book that attempts to trace the development of Hitler's state between 1933 and 1939. Central to it is the argument that during these six years, many Germans could not actually conceive of a political alternative to the Reich, and that, while the ideological roots of Nazism had not yet sunk deeply into the population, the potential, he is careful to stress, was there but crafting a totally new state required the dissembling of long-standing German cultural traditions, something the Nazis never quite managed to complete. At the same time, Hitler's state was constructed on a movement that had harnessed the youth, and upon taking power, the Nazi party lost no time in transitioning their crude political platform into a cultural revolution. This is perhaps best demonstrated by Evans' comment that although not everyone bought into the conceptions like the people's community or scientific racism, they resonated broadly enough across political and social spectrum so that by the mid-1930s, the majority of the population could conceive of economic stability only through military rearmament, national sovereignty, and a social state organized along scientifically racist lines. While there are many academics who would disagree with various points of the analysis, this is not to say that the book has been ill-received. Any attempt to write an all-encompassing history of the Third Reich is a remarkably difficult task and attempting to marshal the relevant literature makes it even more difficult. Despite strong stances over details, Richard Evans offers an analysis of the Third Reich that is not only outstanding, but also is able to synthesize a massive body of work into a readable volume. Because of all of this, it gets a rank of two from me.